Good morning. Well, we are looking forward now to the third Sunday of Easter. As you can see, the weather out here in Jerusalem has changed. The sun is now shining and it will probably be shining for many months. So I'm sitting out here on the balcony outside our apartment, not indoors out of the rain, but out here just to share with you just for a few moments uh, the experiences of this particular Sunday that is coming up. The apostles and these Jesus followers had been gathering in Jerusalem when Jesus was arrested. They were shocked beyond measure when he was crucified. Of course, the day after Passover was a national holiday, so the first day of unleavened bread, so they, no one could do anything on that day. Then the Friday had come after that, and after that people were preparing spices to anoint the body. On Saturday, there'd been another Sabbath, and out here, Sabbaths are very strictly obse observed. People do not go and just uh, treat it like an English Sunday. Everything shuts down and everything stops. And then, of course, on the Sunday morning, the women have been prepared the spices, go to the tomb to anoint the body and find that well, the body's not there. Jesus is risen from the dead. They go rushing back to tell the others, guess what, we've seen a vision of angels. But they thought, no, this is some form of hysteria. And just didn't pay much attention to it at all. And two of them, two of them were, well, they decided to go home to Emmaus. Emmaus is about five miles away from here. And as they are walking and talking, suddenly a stranger joins them on the journey. And he says, uh, why are you looking so sad? Well, what was the problem? And he said, haven't you heard it? What's happened in Jerusalem the last couple of days? Our leader, Jesus, whom you thought was the Messiah, was arrested and crucified. Yes, and it's been three days since that happened. And somehow today the women have come back hysterically saying, he's risen from the dead. They can't find his body. But we're not sure exactly what has happened. And Jesus stops and talks to them and shows them in the whole of scriptures who he was and what he had done and why he had done it. You see, one of the amazing things is as we look through the scriptures, we can find almost a record of Jesus' life written in advance. The prophets and right throughout the whole of scriptures were pointing towards him, even telling people why it had to happen. The suffering servant of Isaiah that he had taken our sins and borne our diseases in his body. Everything was there in the Old Testament. For some reason, people's eyes were closed and they couldn't quite see it and they couldn't understand it. Now, last week we were talking about Thomas. Remember, Thomas was, wasn't there when Jesus appeared on that first Sunday. And he said, quite simply, unless I put my hands, my fingers in his hands and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Well, the following Sunday, Jesus turns up and he says to Thomas, Now stop disbelieving and come and believe. I know that I am truly risen from the dead. And Thomas, with this absolute proof in front of him, falls on his knees in front of Jesus. But the trouble is with a lot of Christians, I find the present day, it isn't that they actually doubt the resurrection, but they're just a little bit careless about what they do. You know, these two, well, they've heard the stories, they've heard that they thought it was rather strange, but they had decided to go back to Emmaus. After all, they've been in Jerusalem for a while for the Passover. Now they're going to go back to Emmaus. And Jesus travels there with them and tells them, points out to them exactly why he had suffered and why it was written in the scriptures and why they should not be disbelieving as well and why they should get back to Jerusalem as quickly as possible. You know, I think Jesus would like to come alongside a lot of his followers today and say, yes, I know you're having a hard time. I know you've been through some terrible experiences. I know you've been suffering a lot with COVID and all the others. I know your numbers have dropped. But get back into the fellowship of the church. Stop being careless. In a sense, you believe, but you've just been a bit careless with it. You haven't really taken it seriously. You see, God needs us to be together, to have fellowship one with another. He needs us to experience this, that he might become known to us in the breaking of the bread. 
So my challenge to each one of you today is this. Think again. Do you really believe it happened? Do you really know that he has died for you? And get back into the church. Get back into fellowship with other Christians. Get back where you're going to honor God in the right way. See, this is why Jesus came after these two. They were being a bit careless. And he wanted to send them back to Jerusalem, where he was truly going to bless them. And I think it's the same for many of us as well. He wants to send us back into the fellowship of the church, where we can truly be blessed. May God bless you as you go back. And may you appreciate the fellowship of your brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen.